Washington State Kent State game from round number five here at Nationals 2015. We are just underway about uh, a minute and a half into this game, so we're joining it a little late, but we're glad that you're here watching with us. Joined in the booth today by my Ryan good friend Man. and fellow alumni, Ryan Men, and also by legendary MSU player and founder, Alex uh, Thomas, who has run off to get some water real fast. Uh, Ryan, I just got an urgent text from one of our fellow broadcasters saying they needed my help. So if you will take the rings okay. for just a minute, I will be right back. I would love to do that. And then just kind of hold the head there. Okay. Just to stay I'll be right back. This is for you, Dan Shackelford. Players are even on the court right now. Both teams have four guys out in their jail. We can get some insight on the Michigan State team when Alex rejoins us. Kent State lost their first match, 0-2 to CMU, in a very impressive showing that no one else expected. Pretty slow-paced game so far. Seven and a catch for Michigan State. These teams are slowly pacing themselves, throwing back and forth. Alex Bolmas has rejoined us. Hey there. Or joined us for the first time. How's it going? Pretty good. Well, I'm sure there are dozens, positively dozens, of Spartan faithful watching this production. You got another tag. What? You got another tag. Yeah, really ben and Alex yeah. come here really fast. Yeah. That was what I was dealing with. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, crisis resolved with our other broadcasters. We are back. We're about uh, about five minutes in here on Michigan State versus Kent State. Ryan, what's been going on so far? Uh, it's been pretty back and forth so far. Both teams are playing pretty slow. Taking their turn, throwing at each other and backing up. What, how would you classify Kent's style of play this season from what you've seen? Uh, <laughs> this is the best they've played all year. Which is no better time to play. Exactly. Their game against Central Michigan was one of the most impressive first halves I've seen a Kent team play. From what the talent level that we were expected to bring into this national tournament, from what Central Michigan was brought in, going one nothing, going down one nothing at half to Central was huge. And their team morale is extremely high right now. Now, without throwing anyone under the bus. Can you talk a little bit about the controversial call that happened in that game? The refs did not fully see the play. The explanation I received is he saw the initial catch, viewed it for a few seconds, turned away to see who threw it to rule him out, and then the player dropped the ball. So it was not a full completed catch? It was not a full completed catch. So that player remained in. That brought a player in for that team, and the Kent player went out. So there was a three-man swing 
in one play. And the player who made the almost catch lasted the entire point and pretty much won the first point. So, uh, important call. It very was. I, I understand the full ruling. I think it's still tweaking of officiating that we needed. Somehow, I understand that there's 10 balls and 30 people on court. But it's something we're working on. Yeah. Well, Alex, as being on the... Have you introduced yourself yet, Mr. Bonus? Yeah, briefly. Briefly, okay. Well, being in on that offici officiating side of things, which uh, Ryan and I both don't dip our toe into that well too much, what would you describe the task of officiating a dodgeball game like? Uh, you're managing a lot of moving pieces at the same time. With Even with a fully staffed uh, court with six individuals, you're not going to catch everything that goes on here. So basically, as long as you keep your eyes on the essentials, the, the end line, the baseline, the neutral the neutral zone line markings, so keep an eye on who's got a dodge one, just try and anticipate what's going to happen on the court, you can usually catch most of the plays as they occur. And if not, from that point on, you just hope to uh, have the eyes quick enough and the reactions on the court to make a decision that corresponds with the activity. Yeah. Now, is there anyone left on Michigan State's team that you are familiar with at all? Yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, Cameron Massimino, number 77, uh, played at the same time that I was in college. That all right. Really he's finishing up, so uh, after a long absence, he's back. Um, typical power thrower. And he's got a bit of weakness uh, when it comes to lateral movement, but on the whole, uh, he can certainly power at home, and that's that's probably one of the attributes I have not seen as much of out of the teams that I have seen. I don't know whether it's other schools are seeing their arms for tomorrow for the potential long haul ahead, but I haven't seen a whole lot in the power game, so I'm hoping that that changes with today's game. Great. Now, Ryan, who is still left on this Kent State team that you had played with before? Um, number is Mitchell Aldridge. He's a senior this year. Steve Cassidy, number 14, he's one of the leaders. And I think that, and John Demharder. So three guys. Three guys. Well, that was the end of point number one. Michigan State goes up 1-0 with 16-19 left in this first half. We'll be back for point number two here in just a second.